In this video, I'm going to quickly show you six different less known Zapier features that I found out that not that many people actually know about. And they are very helpful if you are working with Zapier either at your job, with your colleagues and teammates, or if you own your own agency and work with clients. So let's just jump right into the first one. So here we have an example of a workflow that I have built before. You can watch the video on my channel. But here what you want to do is to go to the left panel over here and find something called notes. If you click on that one you can see that you are going to be able to write down notes and describe the zap that you are currently building this is very helpful if you are working and collaborating with your colleagues or teammates on one zap or if you are actually building this zap directly inside your client account so maybe later after a few months if they want to get a quick idea about what this workflow is doing for them they can have a look at the zap notes over here so here i just went and quickly wrote down the description of this zap so this zap is triggered when a new media is published on the Instagram page. Then the appropriate pin title is crafted by AI with a pin description. After that, everything is put together and posted on your Pinterest account. So the whole idea of this app is that you want to double your reach whenever you post on Instagram. It's also automatically going to be posted on Pinterest for you. And so you are essentially doubling down on your impressions. They also have this beta feature over here, which says generate with AI. So you can generate and describe this app with one click if I click on that one you can see that immediately we got the answer after running this app a new media from Instagram will be created as a pin on Pinterest with a title and description generated by ChatGPT. in this case this is way shorter than what I wrote down if you want to regenerate this note you can click regenerate with AI and then a new pop-up like this is going to be shown and in this case you can see that you have your current note and then also the regenerated one and as you can see this one is a little bit longer so this one also mentions API and maybe some of your clients would be happy with this so then what you can do is that you can click on replace note and then the note is going to be automatically replaced now let's go to a second feature which is going to be very similar to the one that I have just shown you and this one is going to be the notes for your specific steps in your zaps so as you can see over here on the left panel there is also another option called step notes and in this case you can see we have a trigger and then we have three different actions that we are performing after each other so I'm going to go and add a note over here and then a new pop-up like this shows up and in this case you can go and fill out a note specifically for each of your steps so firstly we have our trigger so I'm going to choose that one and so in this case what I could do is to describe this trigger this is a trigger of the workflow it starts the app when new media is posted on your Instagram page if you are happy with that you can just close this down with this arrow over here and then you can repeat this process for each of your steps so you want to click on add a note and in this case we have the first action after the trigger which is the pin title this is a first action of this app in other words workflow it generates an appropriate pin title for the media that was posted on your instagram page this is done using chat gpt gpt4 model once again you can click on the arrow and then you can continue and repeat this process for all of your actions inside your zap this is going to be super helpful for your colleagues teammates or even clients to immediately know what the action is actually doing inside your workflow all right so the third feature is going to be very simple but I found out that not that many people actually know about it so what you want to do is to have your zap open and then when you are done you maybe want to share it uh, with your colleagues teammates or even clients and show them how the workflow is going to look like and so you want to go down over here and hit on the export to image if I click on that one and I'm going to go to my downloads and open the image you can see that we right now have a PNG file that is basically showing us the whole workflow and so we don't have to take screenshots or anything like that and right now we can share this with our colleagues or teammates or even clients to brainstorm and show them what we have been working on all right let's go to the fourth feature and in this case what you want to do is to go to the left panel once again and you want to go to the details section if you click on that one you can see that you have different details that you can set up but in this case specifically I want to show you this feature where you can set up a time zone specific for your zap if you don't know you are going to be required to set up a time zone when you create create your Zapier account. So I can go to my account and settings. And then at the bottom, you have the time zone, which is specifying the time zone that you set up when you were creating your Zapier account. Now, why is this important? You might ask, well, basically all the actions and triggers that you use inside your Zapier are going to have that as a default time zone. And so, for example, if you're using schedule by Zapier, which is triggering maybe the Zap every single day at a certain period of time, let's say 2 p.m., obviously it's going to be a different time in different time 
time zones. So what this allows you is that you're going to override the time zone that you set at your account level by selecting a new time zone for this specific zap. And so for example, if you're building a zap that is going to be for your client in the United States and you are using triggers or actions that use time. Also another example could be that you are scheduling a, a creation of your social media posts using ChatGPT and you want to post them each day at 2 p.m. because that is the best time when you get the most engagement when posting on LinkedIn, for example. So right now you could just clear the selection and maybe I could go and search for America slash New York time zone and choose that one and set this up as the main time zone just only for this app. All right, the fifth feature is going to include exporting all your data that includes all your apps as well as runs inside a zip file that is going to be sent to your email. So you want to go to your profile right over here and then go to settings. And in this part, you want to go to data management. And here you have the option to export all the data. So here, what you can do is to export your data in a single click. We will email you a copy of your zap content and zap run data in a zip file. So I'm going to export my data. And as you can see right now, it's in progress. And after a few seconds, we got the confirmation that it was complete. And so it worked because I received the email with the zip file. And so I can click on download your account data. And as you can see, it's a zip file. So I'm going to unzip that one and open it up. And you have two different files over here. Firstly, you have a CSV file, but you also have a JSON file. The first one is going to show you all the tasks that you have run successfully. So when you open that up, you will have all the data. This Zapier account that I'm using is for test purposes. So obviously we don't have much data over here, but here you will find the data and information about your previous runs. And then the second file is a JSON file, which is showing you all your apps. And as you can see, it looks like this. This is a basic JSON file and the structure and how it looks like. In this case, you will find all the data about your apps with all the actions, triggers, the titles and other descriptions as well. So for example, for this first zap that I have saved, the title is uh, SEO Sushi Articles. Then you have some other information about the triggers. So when it should be triggered on weekends and exactly the time period. And then we also have our user message in our chat GPT block, which is basically our prompt. So here you have all these apps structured in a JSON file. And this is how you can easily download all the data that includes all of the information about your apps. So you can later on maybe analyze it or share it with other people. And the last feature that I'm going to show you is super helpful. So this one is going to allow you to utilize the tables and create your own database directly inside Zapier. So here we are going to be using the feature that is called tables and you can find it on the left menu over here in your Zapier account. You can see that you can create new tables over here in this corner. You can create a blank table, import data with CSV, Airtable, Google Sheets, or even use templates. And as you can see, they only have one at this moment, but other ones are coming up. I have already created two blank tables to just demonstrate this, how this can actually work in practice. So let's say that we would want to create our own database where we are going to store leads from different sources. So I'm going to go into the lead database. It's going to look very similar to any spreadsheet. So here I created six different columns, first name, last name, country, email, company name, and message. And let's say that this would be all the information and data I want to store about the leads that come to my business. If you want to add more columns, you can simply do it by adding a new field over here, then give it a name, for example, test. You want to specify the field type. So you have many different options that you can choose from. I'm going to keep it on text. Alignment left. You can also choose icon and then create a new one. And it's going to then create a new column inside your database. If you want to delete that one, you want to click on the three dots and then go and delete this field. You want to confirm and delete that one. And then lastly, you can rename the columns if you want. So you can double click on each of the column and then write whatever you want. All right, so that was a quick guide about how you can edit your tables and your database, but how you can actually use this with your automations. Well, let's say that you want to store all your leads inside this one database directly inside Zapier. So then you can use it later on for your automations. It's going to be super helpful because you can right now centralize your database in Zapier and then store them in one place. So in my trigger, you can start with any app that you are using for collecting your leads. In this case, I'm going to demonstrate HubSpot form. So if I go to my website over here and I go to contact us form, you can see I embedded HubSpot form directly on this page. So whenever someone fills this out, then going to create a new contact and submission of this form directly inside my HubSpot CRM. So I have filled out this form and the lead successfully came in. And so I'm going to build this flow to directly transfer this to the Zapier tables. So I'm going to start with the event called new form 
submission. I'm going to continue. You want to connect your HubSpot with your credentials and then you want to continue. And then in the trigger, you want to specify which form you are talking about. So if I click on that one, you can see I have different forms on my website. So let's just go with the contact us and continue. And when I test this action, you can see we found the new submission that I have just created. In this case, we have the country, the first name, the last name, as well as the message that our prospect is asking and they are trying to get the answers for. So I'm going to hit continue with selected record. And the first action you want to do after this trigger is to transfer all the data directly inside your Zapier table. So you want to go and search for an app called Zapier tables. If you click on that one, you have the option to choose different events. In this case, you want to create a new row inside your table. So you're going to choose create record. You then continue and in the action, you are going to simply map all the information to the appropriate columns. So in this case, as you can see, we have first name. So I can go and from the trigger, find the first name and then continue with all the other fields as well. And then I'm going to continue. Right now, I'm going to test this, whether this works. As you can see, we have no rows inside our table. I'm going to test this action. And yeah, we got a green check mark. And if I go to my lead table, it has automatically created a new row for me with the lead information from my HubSpot. Now, what you can do here is that you can set up different workflows for different sources that you have where you are generating your leads. So maybe you don't have just HubSpot, but maybe you are also using Typeform. And then you simply want to set up a Typeform trigger that is going to then allow you to transfer all the data directly inside this table as well. And then what you can do is that you can centralize all the leads inside one database and then use this table inside your actions as well as triggers in other apps as well. Now, there are many other features in these tables. So make sure to subscribe down below because I'm going to make a dedicated video just about Zapier tables. And lastly, if you are interested in business automations or even AI automations, then definitely go and check out the first link in the description down below where you will find all my free resources, including the 3P framework that I put together, which is completely for free and no junk, which teaches you how you can write your prompts directly inside Zapier when you are using your chat GPT block. You are also going to find templates there that I update on a regular basis, which you can just copy and paste and use in your job or for your business. If you enjoyed this video or if you learned anything new, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're interested in other AI automations, then definitely go and check out these videos over here that you right now see on your screen. Thank you so much and have a great day.